I'm Steve Hay, this is Carbon Tech, wonderful world of woodworking, and today we're going to have a go at doing some epoxy pouring. It seems to be the trendy thing at the moment. Now what I want to do is do a pour for instead of a river tables or all the gear, but quite frankly epoxy's not cheap and unless you've actually got a commission or you've got a set idea of exactly what you want to do, there is so much fun you can have with using much smaller amounts of epoxy. So I want to do a, a serving tray pour. Epoxy I'm doing this pour with is perfect card, cast, rigid casting. It comes in two parts and it's a two to one ratio by volume. So you've got four litres of resin, two litres of hardener. What I do, I just went to the local supermarket and they've got all these these drink cups and uh, I personally only use them once and throw them away. For the cost of them, it's not worth being miserly. I don't believe. I have turned with this, this particular one, this is rigid cast, and I have turned with it, which I'll show you here, but quite frankly, I don't think it was the correct resin to turn with because yeah it was a bit um, bit not nice so I'll experiment that and I'll go down and see if I can get the right turning resin and we might do another video later on on turning turning stuff with resin which is good fun uh, the other things you can do with resin which I, I find is absolutely fascinating this bowl was one, um, actually my son was making, he came up here for Christmas and he got a little bit enthusiastic while he was turning and turned right through the bottom of the bowl so he went through the top on the bottom. So what I've done, I've just filled that with resin and then I'm going to fill that with a different coloured resin here and then you've still got your mounting points. So when he's turning, as soon as he changes colour he knows he's pretty close to going through and the same with the back. So we'll see how that turns out, it's interesting. Another thing I do when I'm doing a pour is I always have something spare that doesn't matter if it's not a perfect job or not. Because when you've got stuff left over, it's so nice just to put in a project. This one here, I have had for, oh, I don't know, about three or four different casting sessions. And I've just put my excess in there, so I have no idea what those colours are going to look like. But I'll pull it out later on and I'll turn it and have a look-see. Or you can get just cheap little, these are caster moulds for drink casters. And when you've got a bit left over, just pour it in there. So you're not wasting it, because as I said, it's, it's not cheap. It's not like liquid gold, but... If you can utilise every little bit, um, you're getting more bang for your buck. And if it's something you want to go to the markets and, and sell or uh, give away, it's almost money for jam because it's, it's waste that you wouldn't use. But by doing different colours and different um, pores together, you can get some interesting results. Now, this was a beefwood platter I was going to do here, but I've decided, I like that with the borer holes in it. I've decided I'm going to do a different one, which I'll share with you in a tick. A couple of things, you have to be organised, which is really challenging for me. But the more stuff you've got organised, the easier the pour goes, because it's incredible when you do your first couple, you all of a sudden become under so much pressure because you know there's a, a pot life on this and there's a time this has to be done and then this has to be in and yada yada yada. I just get the timber, clean it up and put it in because the way I worked out my way of doing it is I will cast and I want the thickest piece of timber I can. So I'll cast it, then I'll machine it and then I'll finish it off. This was a lump of Timber literally I had kicking around the yard, an off cut of a buttress that came out here and around here and it was that thick. What I actually did was did a resaw, cut it, then did a resaw 
So I had two bits and then I cut them up into three different pieces and um, then we got a, here you go, sort of like that's sort of how I envisage it there. So as you can tell, I haven't machined that. That's as rough as Hessian underpants. Um, that has, but that's only because I uh, resawed it, but you can see the saw marks in it. What I suggest you do with any timber you're gonna work, either wire brush or wire wheel. I used a wire wheel on a grinder and it gets rid of all the soft stuff. You don't want soft stuff because number one, it floats to the surface and gives you a, an unclean pour and the resin won't stick to it. I thought, no, the, yeah, but the resin, this epoxy is gonna set. No, it doesn't. It uh, becomes soft and flaky. So get your wood all nicely prepared before you start. I will give you a word of caution here, word of caution. If you go onto YouTube to see how to do river pours or epoxy work, they make it look so easy. I have gone through three liters of resin to work out how to use it. So it can be a costly exercise if you just get in there and you're gonna do a big job straight off. No, start with something really small, get used to working with the materials, get an idea of the process that you're going to use. And this is only my process. It's not the only one. There's a lot of people on YouTube doing it totally different ways. There are some I shake my head and go, well, why would you do that? But then again, it works for them. And hey, more power to you if you can work out a way that works for you and it's not my way. It doesn't matter, providing you're happy with the result. So the way I made my frame, uh, I was going to the you know, the reject shops, the cheapy shops, the dollar shops, trying to find plastic trays to put my moulds in. But nearly all the plastic trays had a rounded bottom and rounded corners, and they weren't quite the size that I wanted. And even then, when you do a mould in that, unless you're using a release agent, a lot of times the mould won't come out and you ruin your container trying to get the mould out, or if you're a bit too early, you can crack the mould before you get it out. All these are personal experiences I'm sharing with you. So what I've come up with is what I believe is the easiest way of doing it. And I bet you, I, oh yes, I have a look at that. Um, might not be the best way, but I've used it several times and it works really, really well for me. And I make an individual mould up to suit my piece. For this, I'm just using plywood, just ordinary cheap three ply. Uh, that's eight mil. Doesn't matter what you use, it's just what I had around. I set out the pattern I wanted first. And then I went about working out how I was going to set it up. I cut a piece of plywood to the size that I wanted that tray. Then I've cut some edges. They sit there nicely. And I have the ends butting up. Doesn't matter whichever way you want to do it. This is a new idea I just thought of this morning. So I'm gonna see if it works. If it does, it makes life a little bit easier. Okay. All right, so there's my box. Then what I do, make sure it's flat on, on the table. And then I put tape around there. You with me so far? Rip that off. Double it over there. So now we've got the frame with tape on the outside. Put this on the inside. Careful not to fold the tape over. 
Now I've, I've thought about um, stapling it or gluing it on, but what I found was doing it this way, you can get to use the mould again and again without too much drama. Now fold it over. And fold it over on the ends. And fold it over the ends there. Push it out to the edge. And there you have a tray that's going to take your mould. Now the other thing I'd do is you can use ordinary kitchen variety glad wrap. This um, stuff I've got here is actually industrial pallet wrap. And I don't know, I think if you're going to do a lot of this, it might be worth investing in some, I don't know if I'm going to be tight or not. Let me just get a knife and we'll see. It, uh, you can buy it online or whatever. I have used, as I said, ordinary cling film from uh, the supermarket and it worked just fine. This right now. Uh, see, if I did that, I'm just right up here and if I get that folding in, I'm in a world of hurt. So it doesn't pay to skimp. So we'll do it again. Uh, yeah, the reason I, I use this stuff is when I go out and get my own timber, I wrap the timber up in this and it keeps the moisture in so it doesn't dry out or crack or split. That's better. Now you just position that. And push it into the mould. Nothing hard about that at all. Try and keep the creases out. But it's my experience, you can't get rid of all of them. It doesn't matter because we're going to take a fair bit of that off when we put it through the thicknesser. Now work out how you want your Try to look. And that's, that's looking all right. You can have it touching or not touching, it doesn't matter. Make sure it's nice and flat down and not crimped up in the corners. Although you'll find if this plastic is loose, it's not an issue because when the epoxy goes in there, it'll actually spread it out. All right, how's that going so far? Uh, ha, all right, let's mix up some epoxy. <coughs> I would strongly recommend you wear gloves uh, for this process because it does get really sticky. Unfortunately, all the gloves that I've got, they're too small for me, so when I put them on my hand, they're breaking. And the other set of gloves I did have, I couldn't find the box where they were, so I will be doing these without gloves, but I highly recommend you use gloves. The colours, I don't know what colour I'm going to do on this. This is uh, the colouring I'm using. And I thought I'll put, they're all, this one comes in a set and it's different colours of pearlescence, which change colour. Sumo Wrestler, that's the colour I'm going to use, Sumo Wrestler. And you don't use a huge amount of it, you only use a, a small amount. Uh, from... My 
limited experience of doing this, I reckon I'm going to need maybe three pours. And the glasses I use are the big ones. I don't know what they are. You just go to supermarket and they're big, large ones. Make sure it's level. Put it on the tray like that. Okay, that's, that's pretty level that way. And it's pretty okay that way, so I don't have to shim it up. I'll just rearrange this so it fits in there nicely, which it does. Now we will mix up the resin. As I said, it's a volume thing. Oh, another thing, um, have paddle pop sticks or something similar. There, that's what I use to stir it with. And when, when we start putting the design in, kebab stick or sashlik sticks or toothpicks. So now I'm using that beaker and I'm using a 70 mil container. I'll have that one is for the resin, that one's for the hardener. I pour the resin first and you just, I just fill it up, not to the top, but just to the, the lip. Pour it in. And then I'll have the hardener over this side. And fill that up to the lip. Always put the top on straight away or else you are asking to knock it over. So it's two of these, two resins. To one hardener. Use a paddle pop stick to get it all out. This is um, quite nice. Use a resin one on the resin one and use another one on the hardener so you're not mixing them up. And I don't know if you can see that on, but all of a sudden it'll go craze. Now you've got to mix it for two minutes. So we've got 638. 838, I'll stop mixing. These are, I, if, if you can find a little electric mixer, it would be ideal. And this is where you tend to get the resin on your fingers. If it slops over the side while you're holding it, or you go too deep, with your paddle pox stick, it gets on your thumb. And you, and you have to go right down the bottom and get all the stuff that's on the bottom and mix it all up and mix it thoroughly. So it looks clear there, it looks pretty well mixed, but they recommend two minutes. I'm not one that generally follows um, question, uh, instructions, but I have found if they say mix for two minutes, mix for two minutes. Okay, so the colour I'm going to use is Sumo. Oh, that's it. Okay, that one's done. So now I'm going to get some colour. Let's get a little bit on the end of a paddle pop stick. Now, I didn't need put too much in there. And I must admit, I haven't used this one before, so it'd be interesting to see how it looks. And you just mix it all in. Make sure you don't have any lumps of colour. I don't know if you could... Um, mix it while you're mixing the two. 
I tend to prefer to mix the two parts together and then add a colour and mix it in. So I don't know if that makes much difference at all. Okay, here we go, we're ready for a first pour. And I find if you pour it on the timber, it reduces the chance of bubbles. You still will get bubbles, there's no doubt about that. Okay, and I think we'll we'll have another one of those. Same thing. Two of these, one of those. And we'll tip all this in. What I want to do is actually cover the timber completely. That way. When it's dried, I um, I can plane it off down to the timber. See all these bubbles here. If you have a heat gun, put it on low speed. Turn it on first. Put it on low speed and they just disappear. All the bubbles just go. And you might have to do that several times whilst it's setting, just to make sure you get all of them out. It's not an issue if you're going to be machining it off because the bubbles will actually stay on top. That way you're going to take it off with the machining anyway. As you can see, it started to float up. So we'll push that down and we'll get rid of some bubbles and do some other bits and pieces. Now what I do to hold them down is not very scientific or hard. Two litre ice cream containers like this. And they're just full of water. Make sure they're dry on the bottom. I just noticed it's a little bit damp on the bottom. So just make sure there's no water on it. And then you put that on top. And that will hold it down. I'll put another one on the other side. And then if you want, you can put little swirls or whatever patterns you think would look nice. And we'll get rid of some air bubbles. And that is it. Normally I'd leave that and that's it. I'd go up. Go go up to the house and have a coffee and not worry about it, but um, no, I'm going to have to move that. What am I going to move it to? I put it on my seat. Now my seat's all got sticky stuff on it. That's how you do the pour. Now here's one I did last night. And exactly the same process. And by the way, if you're new to this channel, because it's not my channel, please hit the subscribe button if you like it. And I do streams on here on the first Saturday of every month. So okay now with that tape all I've got to do is push down. And the good thing is, says he hopefully, oh, I can use that mould again. This is the second time I've used this mould. I'll show you the first one that I did shortly. But that's how easy it is to make the mould and break it out. 
Let me just, oh, I might use a chisel under that, I think. There we go. Uh, that's interesting. It had a very slight hole in the um, plastic, and I put a bit of masking tape on it. But no, it bled through. It bled through that little hole. So that was me being tight Nike again. Don't. I should have put a whole new piece of glad wrap there. But there's been no. Um, what do you call it? Release agent. This is just glad wrap. Throw it away. And that's the container that I used. It was a little ice cream container with sand in it. And that was a bolt I used there because that little bit of timber was kept floating up. So I put a bolt on that. But you can see it just releases quite easily. So what we might do, might go and stick that through. There's some bubbles I, I missed on the top. But by the time I've machined it, it should be okay. I'm just going to take that out. We're going to put it over the jointer. And then I'll put it through the thicknesser. And we'll cut the ends off. And we'll have a look to see how it looks. So come with me if I can take you out there. Fine cut to start with. Right up if I turn the dusty on. Oh, the dusty bag's full. Do that. I shall do that later because it's about a 20 minute job but you can see the sort of thing we're looking for so when I finish the dust extractor I'll take it down to that level of that timber there then we'll clean off at the back and then we'll sand it and cut it but this is one that I've actually machined and cut which I did on Thursday. That is still a bit soft, that one that I just did. And in a way it's good because it doesn't shatter when you put it through the thicknesser, but it's too soft, I found, to actually um, sand. It just was clogging the paper up. So this one I think should be a lot better. Now I've got a hole in this one and this is something, I'm, I know I'm silly, I'll try it live, we'll see what happens. There's a hole here, right there. Now you can fill it with resin if you want, that takes a lot of time. What I have found to be absolutely brilliant is um, a UV glue. This little hole here, I'm just going to fill that with glue, like that. Get a toothpick and just prod it about a bit to make sure you've got all the air out and you've got a good amount of glue in there. And then You put it under a UV light for about two minutes. You'd think they'd give you a bigger cord, wouldn't you? Let me just put that there. And while I'm doing that, I can talk to you. <coughs> it's the same uh, stuff that dentists use. You know, when you get a filling nowadays and they put the enamel on and then they put that purple light in your mouth? That's what this is. Brilliant idea. So I don't know if this is going to work or not. We'll just give it a, give it a bash, see what happens. 
as I said before, um, people that have, have joined us lately, there's a lot of fantastic, creative, brilliant YouTube videos on epoxy. They do not show you what can go wrong and what does go wrong. Uh, I wasted, well, it wasn't wasting as much as I learned, but I wasted three litres of uh, epoxy before I actually got to something that I thought, oh, is that how it works? So I honestly would recommend if you're going to do it, do a very, very small project to start with and don't have huge expectations because if you go ahead and do an $800 pour and it doesn't work out, you're not going to be happy and uh, you most likely won't try it again. Whereas if you do one that costs you a dollar and it doesn't work out, well, there's a learning curve. What I ha have um, mentioned before is you, you make sure you're organised. Pick a small project, one that doesn't matter, and have a backup project so if you've got any spare resin left over, you can tip it into that project and that way you're not wasting anything. Um, experiment, that's the best way. Don't just go on what I say or what someone else says. Get out there and experiment. I do recommend, however, you follow the manufacturer's instructions because I found that to be extremely helpful. Uh, there we go in here. And just play. As I said, I'll, I'll try and get... Okay, see how that's... That's gone hard now. I'll just leave it on there for another minute. Um, I will uh, check out and find out what other resins are available and what's best for turning. I will show you how to cast an egg. Yeah, I'll do that now. Oh, there you go. And um, it just gives you food for thought. I've got to tell you, I'll be totally honest. The first time I tried it, I thought, I hate this. I saw it and thought, oh, that'd be brilliant. Oh, I'd love to try that. And the first few goes, ended up in the rubbish bin, and I was not happy at all. It wasn't until I started doing uh, these pours here, and this actually was the first one I did, and that was only two days ago, that I thought, oh, I don't know, this has got merit. I quite enjoy that. Okay, that should do that. Now, that should be hard enough that I can run a chisel over that. See that? What we'll do is we'll sand it. If you haven't got an extraction system on your sander, wear a mask because this stuff gets a bit dusty and it's not nice. And that hole that we had, it's now been filled. So we'll go 100. We'll just go through the grits and see if we can get a finish. And that'll give you an idea. This is 120. Okay, I'll go 150. So 240. I'm not sure if we've got a 400 floating around here. Let me have a look. This is 400. At the moment, I'm in the normal abrasive papers. I'm switching over to wet and dry very, very soon though. Okay, so that's to 400. Now I'll switch over to wet and dries. And it's up to you how far you want to go. Um, I did one the other day, I think I went to 2000 grit. Whether or not that was an overkill, I don't know. Let's see. That's a 1,000. That's a 1,200. 
That's a 2,000, that's a 1,500, that's a 400. I wonder if I've got an 800 in there. Oh dear. There's an 800 and a 600, there you go. All right. So now that this is a 200, uh, sorry, a 400 wet and dry. I will admit this isn't the prettiest pattern. It was just what I wanted to try. And that was the first go. But it sort of worked all right. Obviously, if the backside is done, you're going to get a much cleaner transparency. And that's 600. This is 800. So it's starting to come up quite nicely. So I'll go to a thousand. Try and keep the timber part as dry as possible so you don't get movement. Uh, what else have we got? 1500 That's the that's the 1500 that's not too bad We might as well go to 2000 see and I've got a piece I've got two and a half there but that's a bit silly so we won't do that What I will do in the next stream, um, next Carbotech stream, I'll show you the other ones that we poured today, all finished. Okay, so that's, this side here is to 2000, this one's here to 100. I'm now going to put some Triple E polish paste on it, which is this stuff here, I'm just going to put that on with a rag. Let's move that out of the way. Much easier using this on a lathe, a <laughs> lot less physical effort. That's it with Triple E. Now I'll put some shallow wax on it, which again is, is something that is used a lot more in wood turning, but we'll give it a go. I have seen people use car polish. Pour it out the right end, Dippy.
What I would possibly do as well, um, if you've got it, you've got the opportunity, I'd put it on a, a mop wheel on a uh, grinder and that should get you a really nice sheen. But even so, just with handwork, I think you'll agree that's getting nice. You can see through part of it. Gets quite a nice finish and it's very, very smooth to touch. So there you go. What I'll do is I'll fill these other holes up using um, that glue and then I'll clean the back up and then polish it all up like that and I mean that you can see through it. That's quite nice. I like that. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the purple one turns out like. But I did promise you I'd, I'd show you how to do an egg if you want, so we'll do that. I won't do the full pour, but I'll show you how to get that part in there. Now that's a bit of burl that's been painted. As you can tell by the... I haven't cleaned the bottom off yet. Okay, so how you do that is get whatever size cup you want. This is a bit of Buckeye Burl I've picked up. Put that, the, the container on the bottom of that, just draw around it. And bearing in mind with this, it will flare out because it's smaller at the bottom and bigger at the top. This one was different, I inverted it. So this one's got a pine, pine cone in it and I inverted the cup and I sealed it with hot glue. You could use elastic or whatever and then I poured from the top. So inside there is a pine cone on a piece of beef wood. So we'll see what that one turns out like later on. So with this, I'm going to, going to, going to, going to turn it and we'll get it round. Now you can, if you like, go to the bandsaw and use a bandsaw or my preferred method, which I think is much easier, come with me. Oh, oh let there be light, they said. That fits in there like that. All right, let's go. Before I have um, used hot glue to glue that on, but what I found is once you turn, uh, pour the resin, the hot glue gets encapsulated in the resin and then when you try and cut it off, it turns to gum. So what I'll use is that uh, UV glue again, or super glue, or ordinary epoxy. Blow all this off, make sure it's nice and clean. So you don't have any loose dirt on it. I'm actually gonna put a black finish on here first. And then I can put the color on the top. This is just a cheap old tube of acrylic, nothing special, $2, $2.50 or whatever it was. Okay, so that's all. It looks like a, a cupcake, doesn't it? I wouldn't think it would taste like one. And we'll just give that a quick dry off with the old heat gun. Cool it off with a bit of air. 
now with an old cheapo paintbrush because you're not going to get two uses out of it we will paint it really funny I'm looking there you're seeing a blue I'm looking down from the top I can see green and gold really cool get the light out wherever it is pop it there we'll hold that over there and I will talk to you while that's going off Ow! and when you finish using the heat gun just a little tip don't put your hand on because they're hot you've got that different color sort of happening and then I get the glue put some on the underside as such pop it into the cup make sure it's down there nice and flat and then just put the light on it for a few moments I can hold that down there with something else other than my finger there we go Okay, that is now glued in there. It's not going anywhere. And you mix up your resin and you pour it in over the top of that. And then you end up with that one that I pulled out earlier with this shape. All right, well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that first stream of the, um, the year. I guess, yeah, it was. And thank you for Carbotech for asking me to come on and share some ideas. As I said, if you're new to this particular stream, um, if you like it, please hit the subscribe button and there'll be more Woodworking Masterclass videos coming up very shortly on my, my channel. But for this one, this is Carbotech's wonderful world of woodwork. That's the one to use. Perfect cast, rigid casting. There you go, perfect cast, rigid casting. There is another one. There's another two. Uh, one I've seen is a coat, and it's like a two-part epoxy finish. The other one I don't know, I haven't used, so I might see if I can use some of that later on, which would be lovely. I've got to put the light on that, don't I? Um, the colours I used were eye candy. And you, you buy one lot, but you know, you just use such a very, very small amount. That's an egg that was finished. Well, as I said, I don't recommend using that particular resin for turning. It wasn't the nicest stuff I've turned, but there are so many things you can do. Fix bowls with holes in it. Um, if you've got a, a slab coffee table and it's got a big uh, what are the inclusion in it clean the bark out fill it with resin give it a bit of detail a bit of panache try with little things first have some projects on hand that you can fill up uh, so you're not wasting any of your resin wear gloves which I didn't because I couldn't find any but I should have when you're sanding definitely wear a respirator or a mask unless you've got an extraction system like I've got on the sander which pulls all the um, dust and stuff off because it's not nice uh, make sure that your wire wheel or at least brass brush and preferably blow off with the compressor any loose bits of bark or um, bug dust or whatever that is in the timber you're going to use i've also used a sandblaster with a sandblaster up in the other shed and i sandblast the bill sometimes which cleans them up work carefully methodically Bear in mind you do have a time frame. Get a heat gun or a hair dryer to get rid of the air bubbles. That's how you make the frame. Very, very easy, cost effective. You can use home <laughs> glad wrap. Uh, what does it say? Cling wrap. I particularly I use pallet wrap. It's a bit thicker and stronger, but whatever you've got. But have fun. That's all you've got to do. Be, be adventurous. 
but don't get ambition and capabilities mixed up when you're starting because it will lead to a world of hurt. And I'm not saying that's in 100% of cases. There are going to be people out there, first time they're going to have a big pour and it's going to work well. In my experience, it didn't. But anyway, if you've got any questions or any um, queries, by all means, you can email me or the good people at Capitec and they will answer your queries, I'm sure. Excuse my back, I'm just going to put the light on this for a tick. And then it can go off. There you go. Um, next stream, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. But if there's anything you want to see, or anything you want to see again, or any procedures, processes, or techniques, or trips, ticks, trips, yeah, tips, tongue-tied. Um, again, either message me or message Carbotech, and we will do our best to work out a program that will suit your needs. So until then, this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying thank you very much. Once again, if you like the channel, please subscribe to the Carpetech channel. This is the Carpetech wonderful world of woodworking. I'm Steve Hay, and I bid you all a happy new year, a great week ahead, and a great month until we meet again. Till then, look after yourselves, be creative, and just take maybe a little bit of a chance or something. Till then, bye for now.